Hey, John Dillon here with another tutorial from visualbroccoli.com. One of the things we're going to address in here is really kind of how to get a little creative with your text within PowerPoint. And you'll see here kind of a slide that I did that kind of breaks outside the general slide uh, template within PowerPoint. And I think that's one of the ways you can help make your presentation look unique. You don't have to do it in every slide, but even like a title slide can really help set the mode that this is going to be a different type of presentation. Now, traditionally, this is what I typically have done. This is kind of following your, your standard PowerPoint template. Now, I put my name up here, and you notice I got two different types of, I got the same type of font, but two different styles of font, actually three different styles, because one is italic, and then I have Arial Thin and Arial Bold. And then I have kind of a standard. But this is kind of more dramatic and kind of jumps out at you. And what I want to show you how to do is to add this gradient to a text. So let's jump into PowerPoint and let's get started. All right, so what we're going to do is use the original one as our template. And I'm going to just do a little rearranging here. I'm going to bring the visual broccoli, bring this down here. I'm going to take the creative use of text and actually just move that up. And the PowerPoint, I'm going to move down. So we use the same title. Now, I need the text. I certainly could create another text box, but I'm relatively lazy. I'm going to push down the control key on my PC, and you'll see a little plus key next to my cursor, and now I can duplicate that line. I can also just copy and paste, but that is really a neat trick. So I'm going to change my font to all caps. Now, you notice I'm not taking all the font and changing it to all caps. I just want the text to kind of jump out. So, so I not one advocating you should use all caps, though sometimes I will do that in certain situations. I'm going to go ahead and change the size of the font to 140. Hit enter. That's looking good. Now I want a heavier font, so I'm going to choose an Arial Black. Okay, we got it. Now what I'm going to do is actually go ahead, right-click on this, and format text. Now, more than likely, it's going to choose um, what I last used. So I'm going to go ahead as solid fill is the default. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, gradient fill. Oh, good. It's going to go back to its regular default here. So here's what you get if this is the first time doing, using this in 2010. Here's the default colors. Now, I'm in 2010. If you're in 2007, it's going to be pretty much laid out the same way. You just won't have this slider bar quite like this. This is kind of a nice feature in 2010. What I'm going to do is, first of all, I've got three stops. Now, I can add stops by simply just clicking in here. So we want a lot of gradients. But what I'm going to do is I can just grab these and drop them or hit the remove gradients. But a lot of times you can just click in here. And if you just drag this like you're dragging it off, it goes away. So let's go ahead and apply my color. So I select the first stop. I'm going to grab the gold. Second stop, third stop, excuse me. I'm going to grab the gold as well. And the center one, I'm going to apply kind of an off yellow. So now you can actually see the effects going there. I'm also going to change the angle to around 70. And what I want to do is I want to bring the first stop in a little bit, maybe to around 22. And this one I'm going to bring down to center to about 42. And I'm going to bring this one to 43, just right above it. So it kind of has a harsh, kind of a sudden stop and transition there. And I'm okay with that. But wait, there's more, as we like to say. Before we close out of this, let's go to text outline. And we're going to do a solid line. We're going to add a color. Now, white's going to probably work the best here in this one. I want to now change the outline style. It's set to 0.75. Everything else looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 2.75. I want it heavy enough it's going to stand out. So now I'm seeing a nice white outline to the text. And the last thing, I want to add a shadow, a drop shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Shadow, go to Preset, and I'm going to grab a shadow that kind of comes down here at an angle. This one, this looks offset bottom. That's the one I'm going to use. And I can adjust any of these if I want, but I'm going to go with the defaults. And there we are. We already have our text that kind of jumps out there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and bring my other text into place. What I like to do for the most part is try to keep the text about the same width as the large font. And I'm going to change this to white. Again, this is a personal preference. You certainly can play around with this. 
and do it any way you want. I'm going to go ahead and, and increase the size of this font. And what is the font size there? It's 44. So let's go ahead and try the same thing down here. And there we are. So in just a few moments, we actually transform this into a larger text. It's a little more dynamic. You can use this in many different ways. Here's some clip art that we showed you how to do in Photoshop, which of course you can extract these backgrounds within PowerPoint as well as I have another tutorial. And I like to use a lot of these large fonts. Sometimes I'll actually do it in Photoshop, like this was done in Photoshop. There are advantages to that, which I won't go into here. But anyway, I just want to show you the effects of using large text within your presentation. Because sometimes you can't always get a graphic for something, but you can always use text. Let's see, I think we have some other examples here. Another thing I like to do is instead of using bullet points, I'll actually pull out the information and use large text. Specifically, if I'm teaching in a fairly large auditorium where it could be very difficult for people to see bullet points, I like to pull my bullet points out and go to a single thought per slide. Again, more slides doesn't necessarily mean it's longer, it's how you use it. So if I'm gonna cover this, these two points and I'm gonna say three minutes on each bullet point, well, there's no reason I can't have each point in its own slide and go three minutes in each slide, it's gonna be the same difference. So anyway, some, some food for thought there. And as always, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please let us know. And if you wanna see different tutorials or have any suggestions, please let us know. Until the next time, hope you always find unique ways to make your presentations more editable for your audience. Take care.